There are five steps to the focus note-taking process. These include taking or creating notes, processing notes, connecting thinking, summarizing and reflecting on learning, and applying the learning. The purpose of learning how to take focus notes is not just to prepare you for college, but to teach you how to take control of your learning. It is through a grueling process of revision, questioning, and reflection that ideas start to bloom and the aha moment begins to emerge. Focus note-taking is a systematic process that, ironically, plants the seeds of creativity. When you have the self-discipline to revisit and reflect on your notes, magic happens. The first step of the focus note-taking process is taking or creating notes. Which format you use, two-column notes, three-column notes, Cornell notes, it doesn't matter. Find a method that works for you. Just be sure your notes align with a topic and an essential question. Remember, the essential question serves as the roadmap of your thinking. At this step, your goal is to put ideas on paper and make sure those ideas center around an essential question. The second step is processing notes. This is the first step of revision. You need to highlight, circle, chunk, question, add, delete, and more. You are sifting through your notes, looking for ideas that shine. The third step is to connect your thinking or to think beyond your notes. This is where you start injecting yourself into the process. What are your experiences? What is your background? What are your opinions? What are your beliefs? What are your blind spots? Connect these ideas to what you already know and identify gaps or points of confusion. The fourth step is to summarize and reflect. It is through reflections that we unravel ideas and see concepts unwind. It is through summaries that we condense these complicated ideas into something bite-sized and simple. The fifth and last step is applying the learning. At this point, you have internalized ideas and constructed knowledge that is now yours and that you can explain in your own words. You now own this knowledge, and this allows you to think about it in nuanced ways. Now that you know more about focus note-taking, here's your task. Take notes on the following explanation on how to write a reflection. Your essential question is this. What is the purpose of writing reflections? Remember, your notes must align with this question. The purpose of writing a reflection is to develop a mind at work. Now, defining a mind at work is tough, and no rubric can measure it. However, when a writer takes their experiences and curiosities and blends those insights with the readings of great thinkers, ideas blossom. Writing becomes emboldened, playful, and creative. A great reflection is not just the unfolding of ideas, but a peek into what a person truly thinks, an unveiling of what has been brewing in one's mind. The ability to reflect through writing, to synthesize or bring together what we have seen, read, and discussed in our life, and create meaning from it, is a superpower humans possess. Reflective writing is merely a tool to stimulate this superpower. What you don't need in reflective writing is structure, for this portends you know where you're going. No thesis statements or topic sentences are needed. Reflective writing requires the writer to surrender to the idea that he can't plan everything, that goals are sometimes fruitless, and that the writer needs to sit, think, and let the mystery of inspiration in the moment take hold. What you do need for reflective writing is a barrage of ideas. Ideas from the past, ideas from movies, ideas from magazines and books, ideas from conversations, etc., A person who can write great reflections is always thinking, debating, and wrestling with concepts in his head. The the reflection is merely this internal battle spilling out and taking form. The last but most important thing needed to write a reflection is courage. Thinking for oneself requires the writer to take a chance, to aim and throw darts at the board, and hope one sticks. Maybe an idea is a dead end. Maybe it is genius, who knows, just right. Most ideas will be bad, but eventually you will stumble upon a gem.